Hi, welcome to the third session in our study of First Peter. We're going to be looking at chapter 1, verses 6 through 9 this morning. Here's what it says. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You probably notice that this begins with the phrase, in this you rejoice. Well, that it points back immediately to what came before. And what we looked at at session two was the fact that God has caused us to be born again into a living hope, that we have an inheritance waiting for us, that we are shielded by God's power through faith, and that there's a salvation coming. Paul or Peter is saying, rejoice, rejoice in this. Even though now, for a little while, if necessary, you face trials, trials of different kinds. And it's interesting, he uses the word grieved. So you're rejoicing but at the same time, you're grieved. That word is a word that is used to express deep sorrow or pain. It's used a number of times in uh, the New Testament in the book of Matthew. You remember when Jesus talked to the, to the rich young ruler and said to him um, that he needed to go and sell all that he possessed. And the man went away sorrowful. Well, here's that word, grieved. He went away grieved. Or when Jesus told his disciples that he was going to be crucified, that he was going to die, the disciples were grieved. Or when Jesus told his disciples that one of them would betray him, each of the disciples was grieved. And so the fact that his followers would experience trials which would cause, cause grief is not unusual. It's not out of the ordinary. The fact that you and I may be going through circumstances that cause deep pain and anguish in our souls is not um, out of the ordinary. Peter tells us what the purpose is here, and, and that purpose is to bring glory to God. Look at what it says. It says that in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary. That phrase, if necessary, in verse 7 is explained. This is the reason why it's necessary. So that your faith might be proved genuine. In fact, that word for tested or trials is, uh, refers to the refining of metal, heating it up hot and skimming the dross off. So this trial is proving the, the fact that your faith is real <laughs> and it results in praise and glory and honor in the end. Praise, glory, and honor to Jesus in the end. So it's almost as if uh, you're going through these trials and you continue to praise Jesus, you continue to have faith in him in spite of all of the, the negative things that might be happening in your life and in spite of, of being confined to home now during this 
epidemic in spite of perhaps people dying around you as a result of an epidemic, perhaps because of financial hardships or whatever trial you're undergoing right now, Peter is saying that there's something else happening. Your faith is being shown to be real and genuine. Now, we live in a day and age where in America, preachers have been preaching that believe in Jesus and your life will go really well. God's going to bless you with all sorts of material things. And living in a prosperous country, uh, it was easy to, to see prosperity linked to faith. But Peter is saying that faith is proved genuine not through the prosperity that we might have but through the trials that we face through the pain through the grief through the suffering it's in those moments that our faith is proved to be genuine and that faith is more precious than gold more precious than gold, which in the end perishes. No, it says that, that our faith, if it's genuine, will result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed at the end. True faith, it says in verse 8, causes us to love him, even though we haven't seen him. Even though we're going through suffering, we love him. We love him in spite of all of those things. <laughs> in fact, we could even say that we love him in the midst of those things. Paul wrote about rejoicing in our sufferings, becoming like Jesus even in his death. Interesting concepts to ponder. So, though we don't see him, it says in verse 8, we believe in him and we rejoice with a joy inexpressible and filled with glory. Why? Because we're obtaining the outcome of our faith, the salvation of our souls. Jesus is the Savior and we believe in him and we, in the end, will be saved. We will have eternal life. We will have abundant life. All of our sins forgiven. We'll spend eternity with the one we love more than anything, Jesus. And we're obtaining that. And the fact that, that these present trials don't diminish our faith is proof that our faith is genuine. And the only way that that faith can be sustained is if it's sustained by the power of God himself, the God who caused us to be born again. And he who began a good work in us will carry it to completion till the day of Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that though trials come our way and even cause us sorrow and pain, when we look beneath the surface, we're filled with joy. We're filled with joy inexpressible because we are obtaining the outcome of our faith, the salvation of our souls. Oh Lord, we love you. We love you. Thank you for our salvation. We rejoice in it. Oh, use us today for your glory. Amen. Thanks for watching.